The Carolina Hurricanes winning streak is over, but they are still one of the best teams in the National Hockey League so far this season. Zachary Martin of Locked On Hurricanes joins us to discuss how they got there and what it'll take to keep it going. All that coming up on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Gil Martin here and welcome everybody to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL Podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Just download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show my my non-related cousin, uh, (laughs) Zachary Martin of Locked On Carolina Hurricanes. (laughs) And uh, Zach, great to have you back. And... uh, yeah, the winning streak finally did come to an end, but boy, the Carolina Hurricanes are playing some really good hockey so far this season. Yeah, no, 100%. And all as always, thank you for the invite. It's always good to talk to my non-related cousin, uh, especially when it comes to hockey. And yeah, I mean, you know, all streaks come to an end, unfortunately. You can't go 82-0. And yeah, I mean, when you're averaging over four goals a game and you're giving up like less than two and a half, I mean – it's one of those things where, yeah, you're still playing great hockey and you're still 10 and three. So, I mean, you know, it's, it stinks that you lose a streak like that, but it's also like, you know, this is the, you know, Gil, anyone can beat anyone. It's just, you know, some things happen like that. And, you know, it just means that uh, we can start another streak and maybe, you know, maybe go to nine, go to 10, who knows? So it's just another opportunity to just be like, eh, it happens, but another day to start a new streak, honestly. Talk to me about the goaltending because it has been remarkably consistent. And, you know, it's a little mind boggling because this team seems to play better offensively in front of Peter Kochekov. Yeah, no. And the the thing, too, is like before Frederick Aronson got hurt and we still don't know when his official uh, his comeback days because he's still week to week. But, yeah, it's just the confidence the team has in front of this kid because they know that. Yeah, he will be aggressive at times, but knows that he's a rock in that net, and that's where you see where, yeah, there's some games where he might give up one or two goals, but it's like, yeah, but the team can still go out there and play their game. And even in a game where you lose, you know, six four, of course, technically five four because of an empty netter, but it's still one of those things. Well, that was with their other netminder, but still, like, I mean, you look at how just overall he's played so far this season, where he's like seven one and zero. Oh, you'll gladly take that, and the fact that it's kind of worked out to where it's like yeah you know what you're getting out of this kid and it's good to see that you want to see momentum built with him being like your you know your stalwart your horse so being able to log more games with him in the net it feels like the team can just go out there and play their game and they're like okay we know he's back there to do his job but they also make sure not to you know leave him out to dry which is nice too so there's that nice dichotomy between the goaltending and the team in front of him Talk to me about Cy Young Award winner Jack Roslovich. I mean, nine <laughs> goals, one assist, uh, but but nine goals, not a, not the guy you would expect to be leading the Hurricanes in goals after 13 games. No, definitely not. And, and the thing is, I like that sign from the Hurricanes because it's one of those things where, you know, I'm originally from Northeast Ohio. He's a Columbus, Ohio kid. So it's good to see, you know, another connection from Ohio being down here in the Carolinas, but – you, you always, when you look back and when he was at the Jets in Columbus, even that small stint against the Rangers, you could see that he had speed and he had some skill there. He's just trying to find a way to unlock it. And somehow, and he's said it since he's been here, he's found a way. It fits his game of, of the transition style that the Hurricanes play, going from the defense to the offense. They expect a lot of, they expect almost everyone to play almost a two way game, but still tapping into what they're good at, either if it's speed sniping, being a power forward, stuff like that, but implementing what they want as a system. And somehow putting him on the top line with Ajo and Svechikov, which I don't think anyone saw coming into the season. Like, you know, he was starting second line with Kakanami and Nietzsche. So, you know, they go to Edmonton, shift the lines around. He goes to that top line, and he's been an absolute, like, on fire, which is insane to think about. And he he's already tied his goal total from last year. 
he did in like 47 less games, which is absolutely insane to think about. I think his career best is like 22, which if he even like keeps a steady pace, I think he can do it. But yeah, you love to see for the fact that it's just there's something there and the fact that he's found a way to unlock it. And the fact you're paying him $2.8 million to figure it out right now in this system, it's a good sign to see for sure that it's like, okay, (laughs) we might be onto something here for the fact that you said leads the team in goals. And it's like, all right, we we did, we we were expecting where the goals are going to be coming from, getting it from him. I mean, you'll take that any day of the week at this point. <laughs> it's crazy to think about, though. This team has been remarkably consistent. Top uh, top ten in goals scored, mm-hmm. top five in goals against, top mm-hmm. ten on the power play, top ten on the PK. Does anything concern you about this team right now? Um health of the goaltending right now is just because the fact that yeah you do lose Frederick Anderson but you do get Spencer Martin coming up as your third goalie and of course that's just an unfortunate game in Colorado where you're flying same day you got altitude you're facing a very angry uh, avalanche team it is what it is but you know you got Pierre Kachak who's been playing really well too and outside of that I mean it's very tough to say like what can you really be mad at when you're looking at a team who's 10 and 3 Unfortunately, you just had a winning streak snap, but of course it's Colorado. Something weird always happens up there when they go on the road. But honestly, right now it's just you're you're finding the consistency that you really need from this team. And I do think if you want to really nitpick a a concern, I guess it's the fact that while you do have a lot of these other guys who are scoring a lot, like a Jack Rosovic or Eric Robinson or Jackson Blake, you know, Martin Nish is on an absolute terror right now, which is just insane to think about with his new contract. You're still hoping for like an Andre Svechikov and Sebastian Ajo to kind of start taking over games like you saw with Nathan McKinnon or Cal McCarr or name, you know, Connor McDavid, name whoever you want to talk about. So I guess if there's a concern, is that you're kind of hoping the big boys start doing what they're supposed to do and just absolutely dominating and taking over games. So Ajo is still like within a point per game. It's just he's doing it very quietly where it's like, yeah, he's got two overtime goals this year, but I feel like that we're missing that this is my game. I'm taking this thing over. And he's like showing that regularly or making a a massive impact rather than just here's a game winning goal. It's like, okay, that's great. But that's one thing I'm like, there's that little extra we're kind of missing, but that's just really nitpicking. Other than that, I I don't really know what you can say right now. Just how great this team is playing right now. Like I said, 10 and three top of the division. They have games in hand on pretty much the Rangers and the devils at this point. So they're playing with house money right now. Give me a guy who is not making headlines, but is quietly just exceeding expectations for this team right now. I would say Eric Robinson, because honestly, the way he's been playing, he's in the top six. You would never think he would be because the fact that everyone kind of stencils him in as a bottom, you know, fourth line, you know, fourth line guy. And he kind of started there with Jack Jury and uh, Jackson Blake, but then, shifts up to the top six when they move up Roslevic and they move Seth Jarvis down to the third line. And Robinson with Kakanami and Nietzsche, it just unlocked another dynamic to where now you have guys who can – because this this team is all about being versatility and finding ways to be versatile and be move up. And no matter where you're in the lineup, you can find a way to get a line going. And the fact that you got Robinson, who's who's got some sneaky speed, which I don't think people realize – He's had in Columbus, he's had in Buffalo, but now it's like you're adding an element to where he's working with Nietzsche to where now their speeds are working together to where they can kind of play off each other. And then you do a lot of give and goes, a lot of zone entries. And then you got that Kakaniemi as your second line center who plays a little bit more of a defense, but who can find a way to still play that two way game as well and use his body. It's kind of fit in well to him for Robinson. It's found himself to where he's even like he, I think. As of right now, he's tied for the team lead in plus minus. Like he's already like a he's already double digits already, and that's like something I think a lot of people are overlooking is just how he's found a way to fit himself into the like with uh, Rosovic. His game has found a way to work for the Hurricanes, where his speed matches Nietzsche. So that way, it's not just Nietzsche and like a couple guys who might have some speed. No, you have a speedster and a speedster on your wings, and just the way that Robinson throws the body battles on the boards, finds the guys when he needs to. I think Robinson right now is an underrated guy. I don't think anyone's really keeping an eye on right now, unless you're watching Kane's games every single night. So, yeah, I would say definitely Eric Robinson is that guy right now. That's just an unsung hero for this team. 
All right, Zach, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Yeah, of course. Uh, podcast, it's uh, Locked on Hurricanes and all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Just make sure to subscribe and all the good stuff as well. Uh, on social media, it's LO underscore Hurricanes, where you can just see where we're dropping episodes five days a week and all that good stuff. Uh, if you want to follow me, I'm at one true Zach on X. I'm you know dropping episodes for the podcast over there as well. Also, articles that I'm writing for the hockey writer. So if you want to keep up with written content, I got that over there too. And of course, there's a link tree where you can find my articles and where you can find the podcast as well. So a lot of good avenues to find locked on hurricanes, that's for sure. All right, Zach. Thanks so much. Hey, always appreciate it, Gil. Thank you. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. Prize Picks puts its members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. And when my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. So download the Prize Picks app today and use code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download Prize Picks and use code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. 